family Corleone is vicious, ah! intelligent, I believe this drug business is going to destroy us in the years to come. And immensely quotable. Leave the gun. Take the cannoli. But being mean, smart, and memorable doesn't distinguish the family from some of my other favorite film criminals. <laughs> It's the vulnerability in scenes like this that do. I don't want his mother to see him this way. In the wake of Sonny's death, all the Godfather can do is quiver his brow and say, Look how they massacred my boy. A towering man who has killed as ruthlessly as Lecter seen lamenting the death of his son. This scene is why the Godfather is seared onto the pink of my brain. Unlike other criminals, Vito and the family don't kill for fun or in the name of some misguided social experiment. Introduce a little anarchy. The Corleone family kills for family. They say their business isn't personal. It's not personal, son. It's strictly business. That philosophy makes them seem like cold-blooded killers but it's clear that each business transaction is committed with family in mind. Vito's first murder is done to ensure his young family a steady income. Khartoum's head is placed at Jock's feet to help prolong a beloved godson's career. Salazzo and McCluskey are killed by Michael for posing a threat to his father's life. If a crime family loves each other enough to commit murder for each other, then they'd love each other enough to break when one goes down. Look how they massacred my boy. My boy, not my thug, not even my son, my boy. Such an innocent word, my boy. In Vito's eyes, Sonny was still his rambunctious little curly haired boy. For all the blood they spill, I've never considered the Corleone family to be evil. And it's because scenes like this showed me all the acts that could be interpreted as devilish are rooted in love. Look how they massacred my boy. Same for another crime family. A family with money! The Hustlers. Ramona, Dorothy, Annabelle, Mercedes. They drug Wall Street's richest and max out their wallets. Ramona justifies the act by saying these men suck. These Wall Street guys. You see what they did to this country? They stole from everybody. Her justification for stealing from these men mirrors Michael's reasoning for killing McCluskey. Tom, wait a minute. I'm talking about a cop that's mixed up in drugs. I'm talking about a, a, a dishonest cop. However, the fuck them justification is not why I root for the families or why I find them unique. If Michael had really killed McCluskey because he was a bad cop, he'd be no different from the social experiment bad guy. Introduce a little anarchy. No, McCluskey posed a threat to the family's safety, so I cheer when Michael kills him because it reflects what I'd do for my loved ones. I'll take care of you now. Wall Street guys suck, but the Huster family doesn't drug and steal from them out of some righteous crusade to cripple the cripplers of the American economy. That'd be noble, but as much as I'd like to, I wouldn't really be able to relate to that Robin Hood level of selflessness. I only wish I could do more. Yeah. Drugging and stealing to ditch shitty work conditions and be independent? Now that's a fantasy I can indulge. I just want to be able to take care of my grandma, maybe go shopping every once in a while. Ramona and Dorothy sharing a fur coat is the perfect visual representation of a goal that I share with the hustlers. Fuck those losers. Fuck them in their stupid fucking faces. A goal to rely on nobody but myself and the I people that I love. I miss you so much. The Corleone family is no different in their wish to provide for one another. I work my whole life. I don't apologize to take care of my family. Hustlers and the Godfather show the foundation for the perfect crime family is absolute devotion to family. But I've seen Romeo and Juliet. I've seen that devotion to anything can lead to still hearts and still bodies. Yep. So often are movie criminals brought down by greed or drugs or some outside hero, but in the case of these films, it's love. Hey, don't you ever tell her to shut up. You got that? Sonny loved his sister. Don't interfere. Too much to not interfere. Barzini and the other rival families knew this, so they had Carlo B. come. <laughs> Hearing about it brought Sonny out of the house and onto the road where he was vulnerable. And then there's Dorothy, who was committed to her hustler sisters. But she also had a daughter she loved too much to risk time away from. Threatened with jail time, Dorothy decided to turn her family in for the only thing she could turn them in for. Family. Don't they know what's 
I can't blame her. The hard to drug trips the senses, makes it hard to think straight. Even Ramona and Vito ran into trouble under love's influence. Ramona's instinct to mother struggling woman led to her overlooking Don's drug problem and criminal record, an oversight that got her daughters caught. Vito showed love by trusting Polly and having faith in Fredo's bodyguard skills, but they got him shot. The elders knew better than most that love makes you clumsy, so they couldn't blame their children for what they did. Love and protect your family. And yet all that love did was lead to this. Look how they mask with my boy. The reason I cry during this Godfather scene and the Hustler's ending, God, the Hustler's ending, Ramona holding Dorothy. In tears, she says, we were fucking hurricanes. And away she goes, divided by the love they taught each other to show. These scenes reveal devotion to be both the foundation for the perfect crime family, but also the tragic flaw. The Joker will never die. There's nothing he loves that Batman can use against him. The Corleone and Hustler families, on the other hand, have nothing but loved ones to lose. Their devotion makes them vulnerable to division, which brings me to tears because if the 60s were wrong, if loving your brothers and sisters isn't enough, what is? What is?